Today, Saskatchewan Premier Brad Wall joined the premiers of Alberta and B.C. in calling for a Canadian free trade zone within Canada. Premier Wall is joining us now from Regina. Premier Wall, wonderful to have you with us. Thanks so much for joining us. And Hi, let, let's uh, hello. Let's uh, let's discuss this. What exactly is the landscape right now in, in terms of free trade within Canada, and what are you proposing should change? Well, the agreement on internal trade is what we have now between the provinces, and it's a bit of a patchwork. Um, we've made some progress so about six years ago. We made real progress on agreement in terms of improving labor mobility, although we still need to do work there. Uh, where we still have a lot of barriers to trade interprovincially, though, is in the is in sectors, frankly, outside uh, outside labor. So uh, we're saying in Western Canada, it's time that we made this a, a focus, and I, I think there'll be an interest on the part of other premiers to pursue freer trade uh, amongst between the provinces. And if, if someone has a doubt that there are interprovincial trade barriers, they should just try to maybe buy some wine uh, in Niagara or British Columbia and, and bring it to their home province. Um, that's one example. And actually, that one requires a, some federal legislative change, we think, too, to be helpful. But there are a lot of things. The, the rest of the sectors, frankly, are under the purview and the control and jurisdiction of provinces to, to, to seek freer trade. Um, in Western Canada, we have the new U.S. partnership. Uh, it, it, it works reasonably well. It's imperfect, but it works well. We've harmonized the transportation uh, regimes, if you will, the regulations to make business do, uh, to make business uh, easier to do here in the region. We're also pursuing common sense things like one business license. Once you're registered in one of the three provinces, you're good to go in the in the other provinces. Uh, and we're just uh, pursuing uh, even uh, uh, level playing fields in procurement, for example, exist and don't necessarily exist across the rest of the country. Uh, so so if we're going to have free trade with Europe, and we should, and we're going to pursue free trade with Asian countries, and we should, we should have freer trade amongst the provinces. Right now, Catherine, if you're in Europe, uh, as soon as the CETA is, uh, is ratified, uh, a European company arguably can have a more level playing field access to procurement in a province than a company from another province. Mm -hmm. That doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, Premier Wall, you know, another big development today, of course, is uh, the potential here for a national <laughs> regulator for securities. Um, talk to us as well about your reaction to that, your views, and how important that is for Canada. As you talk about a level playing field, uh, we need to be viewed globally as having a level playing field in our securities business as well. Well, that argument does make a lot of sense, and we worked carefully with the federal government to resolve some local issues we had with one regulator. We have, uh, we don't obviously uh, have the same requirements from the investment community that, say, the province of Ontario would, would would have. So we consulted with our own sector there, and we came to an agreement with the federal government that we're happy with and we're able to sign and announce the agreement today. Uh, it allows for uh, uh, some local flexibility, or certainly I should say a local presence of the regulator in province, which which our sector was saying would be helpful. And I, I think it does uh, send the right signal outside of the country, uh, as well as uh, to companies that are looking, obviously, to have securities needs now and in the future that are right here in Canada. And Premier Wall, we'd also like to get your take in terms of the damage and the costs that have been associated in your province with the floods as of late. How is everything going now for you and your province? <laughs> Most of the water is receding. There are a few lakes uh, in the Coppell chain, as it's known, and one in particular, actually, where I think it's expected to still crest tonight. Um, but a lot of the water is uh, is now receding, unfortunately, some of it heading to Manitoba, where they're also getting it from North Dakota. So we're, we're thinking of our friends in Manitoba right now. Um, in terms of damage, you know, the 211 uh, rain event and flooding uh, that occurred then cost the province about $360 million in infrastructure damage um, split between the federal and the provincial government. We think it's a bigger number than that this year just because of the area was was much larger. There's significant infrastructure issues and people obviously have a lot of damage to their homes. And first and foremost, we want to make sure we're there for them in terms of disaster assistance. And then we'll rebuild uh, to, a, I think, a slightly better standard even than what we have now. And unfortunately, we're getting, we're getting better at these kinds of events, both in response and recovery, mm -hmm. um, although we could do without the practice. Mm -hmm. Premier, well, best to uh, all of you and thank you so much for joining us today we appreciate it nice to see you nice to see you all the best Catherine thank you